Do you have worn out lower ball joints on your 2007 to 2014 Chevy 1500 truck? If the answer is yes, then stick around and I'll show you how to replace them. We're going to start by jacking up the front end of the truck and getting both wheels off the ground. Now we can set our jack stand somewhere strong and sturdy. If you're unsure on how to check a ball joint, grab the wheel, 12 and 6, give it a rock. See that play there? You can also check it, 10 and 2, this will check your tie rods, wheel bearings, but we definitely got some worn out lower ball joints here. This truck is four wheel drive, but Everything's going to be very similar to on the two-wheel drive. You're just not going to have to deal with taking out the drive shaft and stuff to replace these lower ball joints. The wheel off. So since this axle has to come out, we're going to have to take off the nut on this side, which means we got to pop this cover off. One of these has to fit. It's not a 30. It's not a 32. It's not even a 33. 36 is close enough. Make sure you grab your washer in there. Make sure you give your axle a tap. Make sure it's free in there. If it looks corroded in there, spray some WD-40 or something, but Make sure you don't tap on the actual end of this because you'll mess up the threads. Put something in the center and you can see that that's moving so it's free. Now this whole knuckle has to come off as well before we get this axle out and stuff. This is just making sure it's going to be a little bit easier to remove later. But tie rod nut has to come off. This wiring harness for the ABS sensor. Upper control arm ball joint nut. And then your brake caliper and then pull the knuckle out of the way. Zip this tie rod nut off. Spinning. If it starts spinning on you like that, you can grab the center section here. So I'm just gonna hold this with a wrench. It's a 21 mil. And then I'm going to turn this to the right. And it's going to remove this nut for me. And there we go. Nuts off. Tie rod's loose. So since we are taking the whole knuckle off, I'm going to undo this bolt for the wheel speed sensor. Instead of taking that out, I'm going to undo the clip over here. And I'm going to disconnect it up here instead of messing with that bolt for the sensor. And this way, I don't have to try to get down on that bolt for the sensor. And as long as I keep this safe, we'll be good. These are 18 millimeter bolts for your brake caliper. Just gonna take the whole thing off. Take those bolts off so I have a little bit more room. Also make sure you have something ready to tie the caliper up out of the way. Once you get this, the bolts off. This thing is pretty heavy. There we go. Yeah, these have yellow Loctite from the factory. It's pretty strong. Now before I take this brake caliper fully off, this will make assembly a lot easier. I'm gonna stick something down in here and pre-compress this caliper. There we go. Just a little bit, you don't need much. That'll make sliding this brake caliper back on 10 times easier when you're going back together. Get your bungee or whatever you're using to tie this up out of the way. Just gonna slip this through the spring here. And we are going to hook it to our caliper. All right. If you don't have your set screws for your rotor, which I do not, you can take this brake rotor off. Next, we're gonna take this 
upper ball joint nut loose. It should also be an 18 millimeter, yes. Just make sure you're not hitting your tie rod. Turn this to the lock, break it loose. Keep your hand on the stud, make sure the stud's not gonna spin. I'm actually gonna keep this one partially on because we still need to break this loose here. See that just pop loose. What I was doing was keeping some pressure on this upper control arm with one hand and whacking it on the knuckle with the other. And that combined vibration and pressure will pop this up. And that's why we left the nut on the bottom so it didn't surprise us. Now we're gonna take this lower ball joint nut loose. And we might even be able to keep this axle in place and just move it out of the way now that I'm looking at this. So hopefully we do get that lucky. There it goes. Jeez. So I have to get the big hammer out. Put some upward pressure on the control arm with the jack. And then kept hitting it and it finally broke free so this one's a lot bigger than the top one we get the axles out make sure you wash that harness if you didn't take your sensor out or your hub our knuckle is off you can set that somewhere safe so instead of pulling this axle out of the way all i did was slip it up over this sway bar end link here and now it is completely out of my way for replacing this ball joint. So one less thing to pull off. So the ball joint has these locking tabs in the body. All I'm gonna do is take a hammer and punch, punch them in so that they're not sticking out. And then I'm gonna pound this ball joint out. take the new ball joint we got a cup here we got an adapter so that the stud doesn't get damaged I'm gonna place that in there like that and take this short cup here put it up top so the ball joint can pass through and also get locator now we're gonna slip this bad boy on oh, just the right amount of room Get this as straight as you can down here. So, all assembled. This is what it should look like before you start tightening it down. Until it seats. Let it loose. Okay. Now this is an aftermarket ball joint, so it has a ring land here for you to put a safety clip. Unlike the OEM design, looks like we're in. We're ready to put our sir clip and then put everything back together and go to the other side. There we go. Always give it a good rotation around to make sure it's fully seated right. Looks like we're good. These also come with a 90 degree grease fitting, so you can pop out this piece of rubber here and thread this in. Now, also be careful when you're putting this back together, since this will sit a little bit higher than the, actually it might sit about the same height as the stock ball joint, but just make sure this isn't gonna contact your axle. The driver's side all back together, new ball joint in, and let me show you this grease fitting. See right there, it's not touching the axle, and it's facing a, in a direction where I can get on it in the future without taking everything apart. So, we're gonna, get started on the other side and take it for a test drive after.
have it. This is a pretty straightforward repair. If you guys would like to see more how-to repairs like this in the future on the truck, please let me know down in the comments. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.